Yo, what's going on? So today we're gonna to be going through how to make a beat like the legendary hip hop producer, Pete Rock. If there was a Mount Rushmore of producers, the founding fathers of, of hip hop beats, I think Pete Rock's definitely gonna be on there. So we're gonna be going through my three tips of how to achieve a beat like Pete Rock. And those tips are you want a short sample, you want a classic hip hop break, and you want to layer samples. And then at the end we can go through how to mix it a little bit. But before I get into anything, I wanna give a shout out to those who suggested this video. Make sure everyone let me know in the comments who you wanna see next uh, in terms of how to make a beat like a certain producer. So let's get into it. First step is you wanna have short samples. And the reason that is, is Pete Rock being the classic hip hop producer used the SP-1200. And the SP-1200 allowed for literally like 10 seconds of sample time total. That includes your melody sample, your drums, everything that's gonna be in the track is going to be 10 seconds of sound sample wise total. So it's super impressive when you think about some of the things that he was able to do. He was able to do a couple tricks to extend that time a little bit on the 1200, but for the most part, you're not gonna get more than 15 seconds of total sample time, including every percussion, everything. So what we're gonna be using for a sample today is this record by Sun Ra, Bad and Beautiful. Before you ask in the comments, unfortunately this is not an original. I wish it was. I wish I had a ton of Sun Ra originals, but with Sun Ra, if you know, you know. Check them out for sure. And so here is the short sample that we're gonna be using. As you can see, it's like four or five seconds. And that's gonna be it. So we have a little bit of a bass line sort of, um, but it also has some high end. So I've already recorded that into the MPC uh, and put it on two pads, just two really quick chops. And as you could hear total, that's like a four second sample. I'm thinking because that is such a quick beat, we're gonna wanna slow that down. So let's do that. And after slowing down that sample, it puts us at about 96 BPM, which is pretty classic for Pete Rock. He's usually in the mid 90s, maybe high 80s, but uh, typically around the mid 90s. So I think to start, we can just record a loop of that single sample and then add some uh, drums on top of that. So let's do it. And now that we've recorded that sample as sort of our foundation, super quick sample as I mentioned, uh, we can now go into step two, which is you want a classic drum break. You can achieve that classic break sound by either pulling a break and then chopping that up directly onto the pads, or you can record it yourself with just classic sounding drums or classic drum samples. And that's what I think we're gonna do today. So I'll go on to track one where I have a couple drum sounds set up. Main thing is you want a, a pretty punchy kick, but more so you want a really hard snare with a lot of air after it. It makes it sound really dirty. I'll show you what I mean. You could hear after those snare samples, we had a bit of a tail off. It's sort of a, a lot of breath after the snare, for lack of a better word. So you can achieve that by putting reverb on your snares or just by finding a really good sample that already has a sort of tail off breath after the snare. And then here are the hi-hat sounds. Really soft as you could hear, and we'll probably wanna have an open hi-hat, just because with a classic break, there's typically gonna be something like that. So I'm gonna start off just by recording the kick and snare, and then once we've done that, I'll add in the hi-hat afterwards. Um, I have a set to 16th note triplets on the quantization. Let's record something. I think that sounds sick. As you can hear by the style we're sort of creating, you don't want something super mellow or 
sort of lo-fi. You really want something that's a bit more upbeat, a little bit danceable, something that makes your face scrunch up, you listen to in the car, on the radio, and it just makes you feel super cool. That's why we're around those mid-90 BPM levels, because it's just gonna be a bit more upbeat. That's just kind of his style. So what I wanna do now is just to make sure we really keep that hip-hop feel, is I want to boost the bass on that initial bass sample that we had because we won't actually have to record in any sort of bass line ourselves just because of the nature of the sample that we found. Um, you may have to record a bass line depending on what you find, but for this, since it is already a bass sample, I'm just gonna boost the low end a little bit on the EQ and then it'll just uh, make it sound a bit more hip hop. So let's go ahead and do that. So the last step that we want to implement, step three, is you want to layer samples. As I mentioned, Pete Rock didn't really have much sample time with the SP-1200, but he was really innovative in terms of trying to take little snippets and put them on top of the basic beat to add sort of melodies and things like that. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take some isolated horn samples and then try to add those on top of the beat that we have so far. So let's see, uh, I'll find some samples and then we can go through them and, and try to find something to put on top. Okay, here are a few samples that I have for the horns. So I'm just gonna play through some of these samples on top of the beat. Uh, we may need to change the pitch of some of those samples just to match the key of what we already have. But uh, let's play around with it a little bit and just see what style sounds good with the beat so far. Honestly, we're sounding like we're in pretty good key here so far. Um, I really like this sound. I think what we can do is take this horn sample, put it across the 16 levels, and then do a bit of a delay effect, which we also went through in the video that's right here. So I'm gonna put that on the 16 levels, and then let's see what we can implement there. going to do before I put in this horn sample is I'm going to copy the sequence and make a new one to add the horns on because when we actually put the song together we want to make sure that we have different parts of the song it's not just a single loop so I'll copy that whole sequence I'll call it horns that way we know that this is the sequence with the horns added So now that we have that horn sample uh, peppered in, I think we can add another similar sound that will just add even more variety to this beat. So then just keeping with the idea of making sure that we have a, an interesting track that continues to change, you just wanna create a couple more sequences or portions of the beat that just have a bit of variation. So I'm gonna add in some different sequences with variations in the drum parts. We'll do some drum mutes and add in some little fills. And that's just the best way to make sure at the end of the day your beat's going to sound interesting even if it's two and a half, three minutes long. So let's do that. And finally, I'm just gonna make an intro, and I think I'm just going to basically loop the main sample that we used, and then when it comes in, it's just gonna sound like a really good drop. So let's make that last sample, that last sequence. All right, I think that's it for this beat. I think it came together like a pretty classic peat rock sounding beat. If you liked the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments what producer you want me to cover next so we can try to make a beat like them. And really appreciate you, thank you, love you so much. See you guys in the next video, thank you.